So this week, last week, we got robbed. And it was a real bummer. And um, so because it was the new house, not our current house, the house is under construction, and that affects the podcast studio. I wanted to talk to Halston about it. So we talked about us getting robbed. And it was not fun, but we're not the only people to get robbed ever. And we're healthy. Nobody's sick. No one's died of COVID. So in the grand scheme of things, everything's fine. But it was a conversation worth having. So that's what this week's podcast is about, is our getting robbed. Um, hope all of everybody's doing well and healthy. Uh, thank you for coming back every week and checking out my podcast. Thank you for all my emails. I love getting emails from people to tell me what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong, what I could do better, and with suggestions for books and for episodes. I love all of that, all of it. So keep it coming. And um, yeah, if you know anybody who could use a good listen, some good friendship podcasts, some podcasts about being robbed, (laughs) then please pass this on because... We talk about everything on Wife of the Party, which I think is kind of cool. That's what I wanted. I wanted it to be a free-flowing, not structured, whatever's going on is what we're talking about. So, um, We have a celebrity guest pop in, too. Oh, yes. We have a celebrity guest pop in. I wonder if you can guess who it is. And he wants to know whether or not you enjoy his pop-ins. So let me know if you enjoy his pop-ins. I, I, I have a feeling I know which way it's going to go. But. He wants to know. So anyway, this week's podcast was me and Halston and a celebrity guest pop in. I hope you enjoy and uh, stay safe. All right. See you next time. How are you, Halston? I'm good. Tired. Groundhog's yeah. Day over and over every week. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Well, um, you look, your hair looks good long. You look very kind of um, dapper. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I, I had hair down to my nipples like about a year before I met you guys. I had cut it. Really? And, uh, oh, yeah. I was all rocker style. And <laughs> it, was, it wasn't the best look, but like a, a, a medium, small length works a lot better <laughs> right i had a man bun for a while okay Did that's, you? My, oh. that's my confession i used to have a man bun thank god you got rid of that thing <laughs> yeah i don't well, think i would have gotten hired maybe not the man bun may have been a deal breaker at the man cave <laughs> maybe i don't know just saying i might have been suspicious of a man bun oh, yeah i agree yep yep so um This is another one of those weeks I tried many different days, many different times to get friends to come talk about many different subjects, and everybody's just slammed this week. So it's just you and me. That's all good with me. I know. I think everybody likes it. I mean, when I talk to my friends also, but there's just an open pocket knife just right here, just right here. So I'm going to close it real quick. (laughs) You never know when you're going to need... A pocket knife while doing a podcast. You never know. Um, but everybody <laughs> seems to enjoy when it's just you and me. Mm-hmm. So, That's um, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah, we can talk about this new podcast studio that's coming. Um, I'm super excited about it. They're painting it today. It actually may be ready sooner than we were talking about yesterday. Okay. That's exciting. Um, that's yeah. very exciting. I mean, I have been... First of all, it'll break up the monotony of me being in my apartment. Uh-huh. But second of all, we've been doing this for a little over two years now. And for you to get your own studio and to have your own set and to have it not be a man cave, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's what do just you so mean? exciting. What do you mean with this right yeah. here? I'm not going to miss that. <laughs> maybe a little bit <laughs> yeah bring that other painting in where he's naked exactly we hang it over my couch <laughs> <laughs> no but i i just think it's so cool and i just i'm so proud of you for for doing Aww. this and it's just it's an honor for me to have been there from the beginning so i'm just i'm just happy about it in general 
Well, thank you. I'm excited for it too. This has been, this remodel has been a, a bit of a rough go entirely. But last week, you know, we got robbed, which is um, not fun and very violating and very scary. And um, they, they, broke, they broke into our construction site, not our home. Uh, so nobody was, you know, threatened or unsafe. But, you know, it's scary to walk onto your property. We had, when, when the pandemic started, I forced my children to clean out their rooms. And um, Isla Kreischer might be a pack rat. Ooh, maybe. What did you find? <laughs> no, well, she had a lot of items. She was, she didn't really want in her room but she wasn't ready to let go of. So like, you know, she was really hardcore into American girl dolls and she had a wardrobe of American girl doll stuff. And she even got into like taking their hair off and buying new wigs and changing the wigs on the American. I mean, she was hardcore into this American girl doll thing. So she wasn't really ready to let that stuff go. But obviously, she's 14. She doesn't want it in her room. So we boxed it all up and put it in the garage at the new house, you know, thinking, well, eventually we're going to have attic space. We'll just stick it in the attic. And when she has girls, we'll get it out of the attic and, you know, they can play with her American Girl doll stuff. That'd be kind of cool. Um, well, the robbers went through every single box we had in the garage and just dumped it, just dumped it out. She had like three cardboard boxes of, you know, dresses and wigs and shoes and purses for all her dolls just strewn everywhere. Yeah, that stuff isn't cheap, by the way. No, it's not cheap. And, you know, that was every birthday gift from Nana and Papa for years and every birthday gift from us. And it was like, that's, that was what she was into. So that's what you get when it's her birthday and when they're in that age. Uh, but, but to be robbed is one thing. You know, they took our they took the stuff for the podcast studio, the like the stove and the um, ice maker. Bert wanted like a, a, an, a legit ice maker. They stole that and they stole our little mini fridge for the podcast studio. That's one thing. But just to go through and dump all your stuff out on the ground, they were looking, they were clearly looking for like something they could grab and go. Some jewelry that might have been stuck in there, a camera, something that was, you know, inside a box. I don't know that they were. They didn't destroy anything. So I think if they were just trying to be, you know, assholes, they would have ripped a bunch of shit up. I think they were looking for something they could walk off with. But what a freaking mess. And it's a different level of violation to have all your stuff all over the yard as opposed to, oh, they just went in and took the stove and left. You know, they pulled shit out and just, just everywhere. So uh, all our tour bus supplies are stored there. Um, Because the tour bus usually parks at the new house, not anymore, but it used to. So we would just unload and load it into that garage over there because no one lives there and there's plenty of space everywhere. Band-Aids, you know, they just went through everything and just threw it all over the, it just was, I was like, really, is that necessary? It's a clear bin and you can see through it that it is like a medicine cabinet. Did you really need to physically dump that bin? I don't think so, you know? <sighs> That's so, you told me this yesterday and I've just been thinking about it. It's so, yeah, the violation is one thing. I mean, that's that's a horrible feeling and I'm glad that you guys don't live there at the moment. Yeah. That would have been a different story, but um, still, like, it makes you have an uneasy feeling about moving into it, you know, mm-hmm. I'm sure. And, like, now you have to do all this extra security stuff and it's like, you don't know who it was. Like it could have been anybody. It could have been connected to construction workers, connected to delivery people, connect, who knows connected to people who may, may have seen his bus there who like so many things can go through your head and it's like, Oh, sorry that happened. Yeah. It stunk. It definitely has. I mean, we obviously have power on site but we had had a water main break. So they shut off all the power just to be safe. Of course, on that day, which is highly suspect. But the only thing that makes me think it wasn't kind of like an inside job is that the construction site two doors down from us was also robbed. So I go, okay, this is someone who just clearly hit the neighborhood. Um, And it was their lucky day 
that all our cameras had no power. It was just their lucky day because I don't think they would have hit the two doors down because it definitely has power. That house is almost finished. Um, but yeah, I, that's the part that makes me think it probably wasn't somebody who'd been on the property. Before. They were just going after construction jobs. Yes, yes. And it happens all the time. I mean, this is not uncommon, unfortunately. Um, I know several people who have renovated a house and had all their appliances stolen out of their garage before they were installed. So I know, I know two people right off the top of my head that happened too. Um, so that's not, you know, I, I actually don't feel unsafe moving there, uh, but it does kind of change our priorities. Like we bought this piece of property that doesn't have a, a fence or a gate at the front. So you can just walk onto the property. Just, you know, it's just an open yard. And we had always planned on putting a fence and a gate, but we we're going to do that kind of last. So it didn't get damaged in construction. But I think we're going to do that next yeah. <laughs> because they just cut the padlock off our security fence. We have a chain link fence, a big old chain, like big chain links like this big chain. And they just cut the lock and they cut the whole handle off the pod. Um, and I don't know how they got in the garage, but they did. And they, so, dr they drove into, did they drive in there or were they like, I don't know. Things? Well, we don't have a camera. And what's really crazy oh. is because um, we have the two, two houses. One house is going to be the podcast studio in our office. And then the other house is going to be our house. And the city of LA now requires that you separate the electric and the water and the gas so that the little house has its own water meter, its own gas meter. It's a huge expense, but that's what is required. So we were digging these trenches from the main house, cute. It was like the house was like surrounded by a moat, not joking. Like you have to jump over this huge trench to get into where those houses are. So they, they walked this stove in a box over this huge trench in the dark. I mean, they couldn't, they didn't just like pull up to the garage and load up and leave. You can't get to the garage. You can probably get, you can get one car length inside the security gate. And then the rest of it is all trenched, is all moated. And there's no way to get to the garage without jumping over this trench. Well, so we're, we're going to fill those moats up, and then we're going to put alligators inside of them. <laughs> Don't even suggest it. Don't think Bert hasn't talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just filling them with water and having a moat. Um, but, yeah, it was kind of crazy. Uh, they were very um, determined. Man, I just think it goes back to the Russians who were sitting out in the RV. Right. <laughs> out front. <laughs> <laughs> the RV didn't have Russians in it. The Russians wanted to take care of the RV. Okay, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, that's Russians <laughs> wanted to make the RV disappear. And I have one neighbor. I called, obviously, when this happened. I texted all of our neighbors and said, I just wanted you to know we got broken into. Um, I'm sure they hit us because it's a construction site. But I just wanted you to know, you know, that that we were robbed so that you can be more careful on your property. And please, if you see anything on mine, please tell me, I don't care any time of the day or night. Um, and one of my neighbors, <laughs> I think he may be Iranian, but his, he, <laughs> when I, he texted me back and he went, this is why I sleep with a gun under my pillow. If I see anyone on your property, I will shoot them. And I was like, oh, my God. Well, I should text him before I go on my property at night because I don't want to get shot. Really? I mean, <laughs> it, one side of the coin is I'm kind of glad. The other side of the coin is now I'm kind of scared. <laughs> yeah, now you're walking onto your property like, hey, hey uh, it's Leanne. And now you just look crazy. <laughs> don't shoot in my own backyard. <laughs> So anyway, that was crazy. And you know, the police came obviously because we, we, they stole so much stuff. We filed a report so we can claim it on our insurance. But the police had said that this type of crime has just skyrocketed since, since COVID. It's just gotten so bad um, that they can't keep up with it uh, or it's very hard for them to keep up with it. Um, we waited 45 minutes for the police and they apologized for it taking them so long. But they said, to be honest with you, sometimes it's taking us like two hours to get to a call like this because we have so much crime. 
Uh, and he said, you know, you hear the reports that California is doing great, really stable with crime. And he goes, that's true, except not in L.A., not in San Francisco, not in the big cities. It's not. It's really gone up. So that freaked Bert out. Bert was like, we're moving. We're selling everything. We're leaving. <laughs> I was like, we're not going anywhere. We just need to calm down for a minute. But, yeah, the police said what's happening now is they're arresting someone and then they get out of jail on bail or whatever. And the court system is so backed up from not having jurors and from not having court proceedings that he's like, those people are out on the streets for six, nine, 12 months before he said, I, the people I was supposed to go to court for when COVID hit, I still haven't been in court for. So all those people are backlogged and now everyone is, we've arrested since March are just out in the street. So we can't effectively police. That was kind of scary. Yeah. On top of that, too, my dad's a cop in a small town, but he said that domestic calls are constantly coming in, you know, oh. like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. And, and then he has to go into people's houses and that's kind of oh. unsafe for COVID. And it's like, uh, try not to worry. But, man, it's difficult, you know. So but he's doing OK. Um, He's been doing it this whole time and he's been fine. So happy about that. But yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised that domestic violence is up. I'm not surprised that breaking and entering is up because everybody's home. So if you're not home, there's a reason you're not home and you're not there. So right. yeah, I'm, I'm sure that it's easier to target, which is just heartbreaking. Um, how much stuff did they take? Like what, what was the amount it totaled about $4,800 worth okay. of stuff. They took our range, our um, ice maker, uh, a mini fridge. They took my shower heads for the new build. Um, we had an outdoor movie set up, like a screen with a projector and some speakers. That's all gone. Bert had bought himself and Georgia some uh, bows, like bow and arrow bows, that were quite expensive, gone. Um, they stole all our arrows, which that's super comforting to know that criminals have two bows and a thousand arrows just running around the city of LA. I mean, that's super awesome. They're going to hunger game everybody. No, yeah. they're just going to sell it online. They're going to sell it. You think so? Those things are known to be expensive, especially the nice carbon fiber ones or whatever that's it is. That's what they are. Yeah, they're really yeah. nice. So people I'm know what that is you don't see people with bow and arrows around. you never you. know wait till the election they might show up oh geez <laughs> right so what else did they take um so you had moved things into the garage from like storage and stuff like that already like you kind of had started that process so really mostly from from isla's room the things we had in the garage were the merchandise from the um Hey, big boy tour that started or the birdie boy world tour that started in January and was stopped in March. We have thousands of dollars worth of t-shirts in there because he, he was pulled off tour in the middle of tour. So I bought merchandise for 50% of the tour because I buy like half the tour. And then as the tour goes on and we deplete our stock, I buy the other half because it's just so much inventory that we have to store. So he had only done, I think, two weeks of a tour. So I basically have, I have probably $15,000 worth of t-shirts in my garage. Do they dump it out or do they look They dumped through? a lot of them out. Yeah. Oh my God. They went through the t-shirts. Yep. I don't know if they were looking for their size, <laughs> but I could have told them the boxes are clearly labeled with sizes. Help yourself, man. Just don't dump them all out. Um, so we have the merch, we have the tour bus supplies, we have the stuff like, you know, Isla wanted to, in the middle of COVID, when we kind of figured out we're living, where we're not going to school, she still had her bunk bed, she had the piano in her room, and they had stopped taking piano. She, had, she has quite a large bedroom, it used to be our master bedroom, and then when we added our added onto our house she got our kind of large bedroom so she had this tiny desk like this big because 
she's dyslexic, I always helped her with schoolwork at the dining room table. So um, she didn't, she had a desk and used it, but it just wasn't big enough for two people. So when COVID happened, she decided she wanted a real bed, not a bunk bed and a real desk. So that meant we had to get rid of the bunk beds and get rid of the desk. No donation facilities were open. There was no way we could get rid of the bunk bed or the desk. We, we knew we wanted the piano at the new house when we moved. So that was an obvious, just put it there and store it. Um, but yeah, I, so we moved basically her old room into the garage waiting to figure out what to do with the bunk bed and, and her American Girl doll stuff and any keepsake stuff she kind of wanted but didn't have anywhere to put. But other than that, everything in the garage is construction supplies. So it was all for construction. Um, yeah, so they took anything of value. They opened every single box. Like my, my bathroom faucet was in four different places. <laughs> I was like, over here was the was the, the, the thing you, the pop-up thing. Over here was the actual faucet. Over here were the two handles. I just, they strewn, strewed them all over the place. So I'm hoping I actually have complete sets of what they opened and went through. But I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Open a faucet. I don't know what's missing from that box. I'm not a plumber. So we'll see. What sucks too is that in COVID, things like appliances are taking like six to eight weeks to get. So I had it all ready. I was super prepared. And now six to eight weeks, I'm going to be waiting to finish the kitchen in that podcast studio. So well, yeah, I mean, and now we can't just leave podcast equipment in that separate house now. No. In the separate studios. We can't just leave it there while no one's living in the house. And, you know, we can't set things up until it's, really ready until we have everything and then we and then we have to come up with some sort of security system so that it that so that we don't leave all that equipment there yeah it, yeah it's become a quite a pain which is piling on top of already a pain you know of yeah of just construction in general you know yes construction it's in general crazy. it's crazy but you want to know something that's really crazy okay i go there almost every day and the guys who work there this freaks me out so bad they leave a jar of mayonnaise outside and they eat on eat it every day and it's not refrigerated and that freaks me out so bad i came yesterday and the jar of mayonnaise was literally in the sun and it's 100 degrees and i'm like i'm throwing this away someone's going to get tomain poisoning from this damn jar of mayonnaise, who told them that it's okay to leave it outside? What? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I, it blew my mind. I've been watching it for weeks thinking, maybe it's garbage. <laughs> no brand new jar showed up yesterday. And I was like, oh my God, they are leaving this outside and eating it. What? Right? Mayonnaise? mayonnaise that's like the worst condiment i can understand mustard maybe oh mustard doesn't need to be refrigerated it's not necessary <laughs> ketchup mayonnaise is raw <laughs> egg mayonnaise is just straight lard oh my goodness that is disgusting in the sun nonetheless i mean even a sandwich with mayonnaise that's too hot is weird it like, is i agree <laughs> Mayonnaise is meant to be cold. It is not meant to be hot. It's almost sacrilege to have hot mayonnaise. What do they do? What like do they just grab a spoon? Do they just Yeah. They just and I, I guess it, I don't I don't know. Oh, I can't even don't even <laughs> say that, Halston. That makes me so sick. Who could eat a spoon of mayonnaise? I mean, I love mayonnaise, don't get me wrong. I put mayonnaise on everything, but I couldn't eat it by itself. <sighs> It freaked me out so bad. They leave those, the bag of the like the tostada chips, you know, the big like flat kind of corn chip looking thing that they put beans or something on top of. And the only thing I can think of is I know they bring beans and they leave that bag of chips. They leave the bag of the tostada chip things and the mayonnaise right next to each other as if like, I'll be back tomorrow for those. <laughs> 
and they, you know, they start depleting. So they're eating those two items regularly. And the, the crazy thing is there's a working refrigerator there. Put it in the refrigerator. They leave it in the sun. I mean, uh, you got to tell them. <laughs> I have told them. I have. I told Paul, the, the head guy, I was like, what are you doing? He's just <laughs> laughing at me. Oh, don't ever put it in the refrigerator. It's crazy. Okay. They're made of different metal than I am. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's like a marathon runner, how they're going to grab a spoonful of peanut butter on the middle of the run or something like that. <laughs> they need that mayonnaise. It's, their, it's the fuel to keep on going. No, it's not that they're eating it. It's that. Mayonnaise actually becomes poisonous. Did you know that? No. Oh, oh, yeah. Mayonnaise, if you leave it out of the fridge, you should throw it away. Because it will make you, it will make you, it gives you food poisoning. Not joking. It's not about eating the mayonnaise. I mean, that's gross enough in and of itself. But I can't believe they eat it having it not having been refrigerated and they're not like shitting and vomiting everywhere. It's awful. Like, you can't cross-contaminate with mayonnaise. Like, you can't, like, spread mayonnaise and then stick your mayonnaise in your pickles. Yeah. Because then you've contaminated your pickles. Like, mayonnaise is, like, it's almost like nitroglycerin. (laughs) Very unstable. (laughs) You have to to know what you're doing, right? And they just leave it in the sun. That's what I was worried about. It's like, how are they? Their innards are made up of something else. I mean, oh my goodness, that's, okay. that's pretty gross. Um, it's pretty gross. <laughs> it's pretty gross. It's pretty gross. Wow. <laughs> that is something else. <laughs> <laughs> I learned something every day. <laughs> wow. So Brooklyn has been gone since COVID. You're all by yourself. Brooklyn is your girlfriend. Yeah. Brooklyn's my girlfriend. She's been gone. Yeah. Five months. It'll be. She gets back. Oh my god! Um, what are you yeah, gonna do when you see her? Celebrate. Do a little dance. Make a little love. Get down tonight. <laughs> Amen. Right. <laughs> oh, speak of the devil. Um, you know, uh, I think if I was gone for for five months, Bert would fall to his knees and start sobbing. That's what I think. Yeah, it's there's some crazy circumstances going on so, be, with with the pandemic. That's one thing. Um, she was a host at a restaurant, and that those jobs aren't available anymore. So um, she she went on unemployment, and she would just have to stay in the apartment. You know, she would just. For such a long time, I mean, she she's not built like that. I mean, she needs to go outside. She needs to be moving. She she's you know a big ball of energy that way, and um, there just is not that much to do here like that. Mm-hmm. And um, the things that you can do are limited. So she's not one to do the same thing over and over and over. I can do that. I'm built like that. I'm I kind of thrive in this sort of structure where. I have a set schedule that I just do every week and uh, she's not built like that. So she was going a little crazy, just being stuck in the apartment and I'm working. So it's, it's kind of hard to be there while and not be there. You know what I mean? So she was struggling a little bit and then her grandma passed away. Aww. Yeah. And then her, and then it was like, COVID? Did she pass away from COVID? No, she had a fall and she wasn't able to go to the hospital because of COVID. Oh. Yeah. She was in a, a, a home. Oh. And uh, it was, she's in Seattle, so they couldn't take her and then bring her back to the home because just in case it would af- affect the other um, tenants. Residents. Mm-hmm. So, and then at that point it was like, okay, you need to go home back to Seattle. You need to be with your family. Um, you can't just be stuck here in your apartment, just mourning the loss of your grandma without your family, you know? So her mom drove down from Seattle to pick her up and then drove back up. And, uh, yeah, that was almost five months ago now. And wow. Yeah. She was up there outdoors all the time. 
staying in um, at her parents' property. They have an outdoor company, an adventure company for rafting and hiking and all that stuff. So she was able to stay very active and busy that way. And that's just going to help her, especially yeah. like getting through COVID. So, I mean, I can't compete with that, you know? So yeah, I, yeah. I just want what's best for her. And at that point, that's what was best for her. And, okay. uh, and she's ready to come home now. Mm -hmm. Um, like three, two, two weeks ago or so they started a, uh, a trip. Mm -hmm. Her and her mom went on a trip around the United States. They're just driving, staying in campgrounds and staying socially distanced and just seeing just different beautiful landmarks and Mount Rushmore and they're going to go to the Grand Canyon and they're going to try to go to Yosemite and just, just going everywhere. And uh, that's just how they are. Like her and her mom are kind of the same that way. They, they're go, 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 like different next, next, go, go. And so, She's having a really good time and it's, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. I mean, she, yeah. she just turned um, 24 and how many 24 year olds get to do that? You know, yeah. when you're trying to start a life, when you're trying to start your adult <laughs> life right out of college, you're working really hard and you're working shit jobs and you don't get to go on trips like that with your family. I mean, at least I didn't. And so it's a once in a lifetime thing. And I'm, I'm just happy that she gets to do that. I mean, that's so cool. Um, and it's a lot better than being stuck in the apartment. You know what I mean? So her mom's going to be out there for like six months. Wow. So Brooke's going to fly back for our four year anniversary. We're going to go to big bear. And then, um, and then at some point maybe she'll meet back up with her mom, but, um, yeah, it's time for her to at least visit or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Well, it's very mature of you to understand all this. It's very, very mature um, and wise because and, – and kind and compassionate and healthy because then you are not enmeshed with her. You know, you know you are two separate people and what she needs is different than what you need. And that's okay. That's really, uh, really strong. Good for you. Thank you for saying that. Um, yeah, thank you. I, I just, just makes sense that way, you know? Mm -hmm. People, sometimes I think people hold on too tightly to their partner. And uh, that just doesn't work. You have to, you have to be loose. Not loose morally or ethically, but loose in, in, in your need, I guess, I think, um, I know that's Bert, Bert is very all over me when he's here, but when he's not here, he's very loose. So I think I get my moments of loose and if I didn't have them, I'd be out of my mind because you, you have to have some freedom, some autonomy in your relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's a couple of things for me. I'm, lucky in a way that I was raised in the military. I'm kind of used to being away from loved ones and family members and just for long stretches of time. I mean, my dad was in Iraq for a while mm. and uh, on and off for like two and a half years at one point. Wow. And it was, yeah. I mean, that was, I don't know if anything's going to be harder than that. <laughs> you know, so right, right. I'm someone that also goes with the flow. I roll with the punches. I, I, I it's life. I don't have a normal life. I, I gave up the normal life to be in LA and, and um, work down here because this is what I love. This mm -hmm. is what I want to do. I'm not a normal person who can just have a job that isn't something that I love, love, love. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't involve producing or music in any way, I'm, I'm going to go crazy. Yeah, yeah. And so I had to move to L.A. And so it's never been a doubt in my mind. I mean, ever since I decided to do it when I was a teenager, this is just where I'm going to be. This is where I'm happy. This is where I thrive. I feel like I belong here. Mm -hmm. When I'm in a small town 
in Oregon where I'm from, I don't feel like I belong there at all. And I feel like it's, it weighs me down. It's heavy. The people there are, I don't want to turn out like them that, you know, like some of them, some of them. Yeah. I'm talking about like the old people who never did anywhere, did it, did anything or went anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. Same thing with Georgia. There's a lot of that. Yeah. So it's, it's all over the world. Yeah. But you know, I think the question, the healthy question to ask yourself, if you're living in a place is, am I thriving? And the answer to that question will tell you if you're on the right path. Am I thriving? If the answer is no, then you need to make some changes. What those changes are, I don't know. Maybe a new job, maybe a new city, maybe a new girlfriend, maybe maybe a new workout routine. I don't know. But am I thriving is a really great question. I've I've been thinking about the, the word thrive in the context of my house and in my children, my children and where are they not thriving, right? Some of what's happening now is about COVID and, and I can't do anything about it. Like Isla, Isla is not thriving right now. She is, she is, she is working it day to day. She's going day to day, but I would not say that child is thriving because she really needs to be with a group of her peers to thrive. Um, and I'm not sure how to help her because I can't really give her a group of peers. I mean, we have people that we co-bubble with that she sees, but it's not the same. She needs a variety of people. She's not one of those people that has one best friend and that's it and she's done. That has never been the way she works. She's always had one best friend and 18 other friends that she floats around, you know, and it's really hard to see your child and go, they are not thriving right now. And I I really feel like my hands are tied with her because it is 100% about not being able to be in school. 100%. Um, And yeah, but that question is, when I think about that question and apply it to a lot of people, the answer is no, they're not. And yeah. that's really sad. I agree. Um, that's why I left my hometown twice because both times I just didn't feel like I was thriving <clears throat> and being in LA, even, even just trying to make something happen out of thin air while I'm delivering pizzas and working on producing and, and just grinding it out. I mean, working so hard mentally, emotionally, physically, I just, you wake up every morning and you're just, I'm just going to get it today. You know, yeah, like yeah. there's that energy here and it, at least it gives me that energy. Yeah. And I, I feel like I'm thriving when I'm here and mm-hmm. And I just don't feel that way anywhere else. Right. Let's look up the definition of that word. I always love actual definitions of words um, uh, because they, they make the thought so clear, right? Yeah. I think you're right about a lot of people not thriving. Um, Well, when there's so many products named thrive that I can't get to the definition. Definition. Okay. A thrive definition. What is the se- definition of the word thrive? Thrive. Oh, God, I need my glasses. Um, grow or develop well or vigorously to prosper or flourish. Mm. Flourish. I like that word. Grow or develop vigorously. Yeah, that's exactly vigorously. what I was talking about. Like, I'm going to get it today. Like Exactly. We, so that is the exact word. That's the right word. Where you Are feel you, like you have a fire under your butt, you know? Yes. And the thing is, like I have this friend who owns an auto part shop back at home. He freaking loves his job. He loves that he owns this business. He loves it. Now, every day one could say is relatively the same as the next, but he freaking thrives in that business. So what? That's awesome. It's not saying that you have to be a producer and come to LA. You can thrive wherever you're living. 
as long as you are, then that's, that's what you're meant to be doing. You're not meant to, 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 to come on this planet and stagnate. Yeah. I mean, most people don't want to be producers, actors, musicians, no, all no. that sort of stuff. Most people don't want that. Um, but for me, that's just personally my story and the only way that I can. No, no, no. Yeah, of course. Connect but I think it. for people who work at an auto part shop, right? Are you thriving? And if you're not, how can you thrive within what you're doing now, right? Because some people uh, aren't as lucky as me and don't have the power to make that change today. To go today, I'm going to now be a blah, blah, blah. I am going to continue to work at the auto parts store. So how can I thrive within the context of that store? Because part of thriving also, I believe, is your perception, is, is your perception, part of it. Um, Bert and I were talking about this this morning, um, and we were talking about uh, the McDermott Methods parenting series that I've been doing that they're coming on in two weeks to talk about, and I freaking love it. I cannot wait for that podcast because I have so much to say, but this week's lesson was about beliefs and your belief system, and your belief system it, it controls everything. So you can say, I, uh, this is what Bert said this morning. He said, you know, I, I figured something out about myself. All I keep saying is this house is never going to be finished. This house is never going to be finished. I'm never going to get to live in this house. It's just never going to be finished. Or I could say, I can't wait for this house to be finished. I can't wait for this house to be finished. That's your perception. One of them is, is, is flourishing, thriving. And one of them is stagnant and dead. But you're in the same circumstance. We have, this has been a shit show of a remodel, in my opinion. Not because of anything huge, because it's a pandemic. And all these city offices are closed and something that takes one day is taking six or eight weeks. And it's just the way it's going. So what is your perception of that? You know? And so even if you're working a shit job, there's, I think there's two sides to the coin. One is if you're not thriving there, then how can you change it? And does that mean changing your job or does that mean changing your perception? So, you know, some people don't thrive anywhere. Some people may say, I want to go back to school and be a nurse and they're a nurse and they're still not thriving. So there's something, there's two things. One, some people can recognize they're not thriving, make a change and start thriving. And I think, think some people can recognize they're not thriving, make a change and still can't seem to thrive. And those, those people, I think, have a, a problem with their belief system, with their perception. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And it goes to me again. I feel like I kind of talk about this every time we do a podcast, but gratitude, I mean, that flipped the switch for me in my head. I mean, yeah. gratitude goes along with that. I mean, instead of saying this house is never going to be done, saying I can't wait for this house to be done. And I'm so grateful that we found our yeah our our dream house and a house that we're going to be in for a long time. And that just kind of gives it energy in the right direction. Yeah. And And if you give it energy in the wrong direction by being negative, then that's what you're going to get out of life. Yeah. So it kind of goes in with the four agreements. It goes in with mm-hmm. gratitude. It goes in with that sort of pool for me. Mm-hmm. And that was a switch that had to be flipped in my head before I even like had an ounce of success. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I had to be, the best pizza delivery guy. I had to, <laughs> I had to thrive where I bet I, you were. Seriously. I bet that goal was achieved. <laughs> I had to, yeah, I had to thrive in that situation that I was in, in order to propel myself forward mm-hmm. because I could see the people that had been there for longer than I had. And I didn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. And I could see that their what their attitude in life was. You know, they were older than me. They didn't have a good attitude in life. Right. And I would look at that and go, I can't be that. I have to be the opposite of that. Right. Because if I'm the opposite of that, then I'm going to be somewhere else. And right. 
anywhere else is better than here. And so I needed to be comfortable here first. Right. right. And not comfortable in the way that you become stagnant, but comfortable in your skin and comfortable in working hard and not having an ego about it. That was probably the hardest part for me is that I, I had an ego about it. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't like being in a band and then delivering pizzas and having people that were at my shows come to the pizza shop and see me there. Mm-hmm. I had people like come to the pizza shop and wanted me to sign things. Like wow. I had an ego about it. You know, I had people coming and showing me tattoos of my band's logo that they got. Wow. And I had, it was really difficult for me to not have that ego as a, as a front man, but man, I got that ego handed to me. Definitely. <laughs> as the universe does, um, it just, it just pointed it out to me and, and I needed to to drop that side of me and to not, feel that way and to be happy where I was to not feel like I was better than where I was at right because I'm there so I'm not you know well I could I could strive to be better but at the moment this is where I'm at so I need to be I need to have my shit together here before I can go anywhere else that's right and happy only lives here Happy only lives here. Here. Now. Happy in the future doesn't do anything for you. Happy is a present moment feeling. So if you're not happy in the present moment, when do you think it's going to happen? It happens right now. You have to be happy with yourself. You're so very smart because that you're you're right ego gets in the way of so many things in work in relationships and self-care and self-growth and thriving ego gets in the way of it um and ego is helpful it's not something you should be without it's just something that you should be in charge of if you're in charge of your ego then then that's really healthy i mean sometimes your ego being threatened or or pricked or whatever is a good indicator that something's off and that you need to figure something out. But if it runs your life, then it, you, you can't really thrive. I, we, a, y- a young lady came here this morning to give Bert a COVID test and she had rang her doorbell and I'm not s- a super big fan of our doorbell company. Um, people will ring the doorbell. You came yesterday and rang the doorbell, never rang. It never rang. And I have like a plugged in doorbell chime in my house. So the doorbell never rang. Like it doesn't just ring on my phone. It rings physically in my house. So I did it again this morning. And I came outside and saw her on my porch. I was like, oh my gosh, have you been here a long time? I'm so sorry. She was, she was so righteous. I've been ringing the bell. And I went, well, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I've been home this whole time. I did not hear you ring the bell. Did you knock? No. I thought ringing the bell was enough. And I went, whoa, okay. Well, clearly it wasn't since I didn't answer it. <laughs> but if you want to be right, go ahead. But if you wanted to just not be sitting outside in the heat for 15 minutes, maybe you should have knocked on the fucking door. You know, come on. That's I wouldn't purposefully do that. Most people wouldn't purposely not answer the door when you're expecting someone. I was expecting her. So I knew she'd be there at about nine o'clock and I had to leave at 9.15. So at least I could have given her a glass of water or something and let her sit outside. But I thought, that's you thinking, yes, it is rude to show up and have someone be 15 minutes late. That is absolutely rude. But, but you see my cars are here. It's obvious that someone's here. You had rather be right then knock on the door. Give it one more shot. You rang the bell. It didn't work. Oh, well. See, they're not here. Those people. That was the feeling I got from her. Now, maybe I misread her, but I don't think so. I'm pretty good at reading people. She was very righteous about me not answering the bell when I'm clearly at home, you know? Well, saying I thought the bell was enough is... I thought the bell was enough. And I went, <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> so when you go to work, do you say, well, I thought doing the minimum was enough. Is that okay for your boss? She might. So if you really want in, don't you knock also? Don't you? Don't you? Yeah. I mean. Or does your ego say, I thought the bell was enough. The bell should have been enough. You're the asshole. That's what, that's what her attitude was. And I was like, wow, that's really unfortunate because you're going to be spending your whole life disappointed in people. And quite honestly, nine times out of 10, people disappoint you um, not on purpose. You know, most people aren't malicious and, and intend to hurt your feelings or let you down or disappoint you or, or not hold up their word. Most people really mean to do well. And so when it happens, back to the four agreements, you don't take it personally and you, you find out what happened before you react, you know? I am impervious to being disappointed in people because I have no expectations. Right. That's very smart. I learned that from Gary V. He, he has no expectations of, of um, people uh, giving him gifts that he has given, you know, to them. Does that make sense? I don't know if I worded like that if, right. Like if you give him a gift, he has to give you one back like that. Right. Yeah. No, he, he'll hook you up with a connection or whatever it is oh. or, or a job or something. And he doesn't expect anything in no. return. No. A lot of people have expectations of people when they are giving or that is very true. And a gift is not a gift. If there's an expectation. Exactly. It's so a bar. You can't be upset or disappointed in other people if you aren't worrying about <laughs> your own expectations of them. Right. That's just such a waste of time. Yes. To to have expectations of anybody. No one's going to let me down because I don't have any expectations of anybody. You know, like I just well, flow. You, I don't think you can say that as an absolute. Not a hundred percent. Obviously, yeah. if 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 my sister murders somebody, I'm going to be very disappointed. <laughs> well, yeah, and if you, if Brooklyn cheats on you, exactly. It, you know that that's it. You're talking about two different things. I wanted to make that clear. Yeah, you're talking about two different things. Yeah. One thing is, of course, there are expectations in life. Your your boss has expectations that are realistic. Yeah. And real, and your your wife, your spouse, your brother, your sister, your mother your close friendships, you know, I don't lie to my friends. That's an expectation that they don't lie back. But I know what you're talking about is that this is a way, what I call that. I call it running your own race. Exactly. I'm running my race, right? You yes. run your race. And if I give you a leg up in your race, that's because I, that now that's part of your race. That's not mine anymore. So when he gives you a gift, like you're talking about, that's part of your race. So in his mind, he doesn't go, well, that's still part of my race, even though I gave it to you. You're running your own race. So your expectations have to do with your little uh, insulated world and not people outside of that. I think that's what you mean. Yeah. The things that I can control. Yes. But and the... And the, the yeah, running your own race is something somewhat, someone said that to me when I was young, really young, like maybe 13 or 14. I don't even remember who it was. But, and I don't think they said it to me. I think, seems like I was like in cheerleading practice or something. And people were arguing about something. And the coach said, you run your race and you run your race. Don't worry about what she's doing. You don't worry about what she's doing. You worry about what you're doing. And if everybody worries about what they're doing, we'll be on track. And I thought, huh, that's pretty true. And then as life has gone on, I keep applying that. Like to, our daughters had a fight yesterday and it was about, well, she, no, but she, and I said, you run your own race. You don't know what her race is like. So don't put any perceptions of yours on her race. And you run your race. You don't know what her race is like. So don't think you do. You run your race. You run your race. And don't worry about it. Because 
guess what? Fair is not equal. Fair is not equal. Boom. Sports psychology is still psychology. There's a great picture of uh, Michael Phelps swimming, doing the, you know, his butterfly stroke or whatever it is. And then his opponent is looking at him and he's looking straight ahead. Wow. I just got chill bumps. I just got serious. Can you see them? I just got chill bumps. That is the definition of ego. Yeah. And, and what's, if you're jealous, you're not running your own race. If you're envious, you're not running your own race. If you're resentful, you're not running your own race. You're worried about somebody else's race. And that's what I mean by no one can let me down because I don't have those expectations. Because you're running your own race. Boom. Yeah, exactly. That is so wise. And guess who thrived more than anybody in swimming? Michael Phelps. Because he ran his own race. So, yeah, thriving comes from that kind of focus. It takes a great deal of focus. And it's a lazy eye that starts looking at someone else's race. It's lazy. And it's because it's uncomfortable to run your own race. Because guess what? You have to see where you have flaws and imperfections and issues and drama and bullshit and lies to yourself. And when you start looking at all that, it's really hard work to get it straightened out. It's much easier to look over there and go, well, she's an asshole because she's got everything. You know, that's super easy to do (laughs) and way, way less confronting than looking at your own stuff. No, anyway. Run your own race. Yeah, his opponent was his opponent had doubts about himself. So that's why he had to look over. Michael Phelps didn't have doubts about his performance or about himself or about his times. And that's who has the gold records, you know? Right. And I just I just, yeah, I just think that that's so cool. That's very cool. Who's that? Somebody coughing outside of my apartment. Oh, it's COVID. Yeah, I, I'm like, if you cough within the five <laughs> second radius of this place, I will come out there. <sighs> Not good. Not yeah. Good. Anyways, man, I'm, I'm, I just, it's, I'm so sorry you got robbed and broken into. It's more about the violation than anything, really. But it is, and yeah. it's a bummer, and it stinks. But in the grand scheme of life. No one's sick. We haven't lost anybody from COVID. We are still able to work our jobs. So really in the grand scheme of life, it's okay. You know, it's hard. It's hard because you have to do that with a lot of things in life, I think, is you have to go, this sucks. And in the grand scheme of things, it's really okay. There's so many people who are dealing with so much more than, oh my God, my stove got robbed out of my garage, you know? Right, yeah. But it doesn't discount my experience, but it's relative to everything else that's going on in the world. Did you watch the debates last night? I did, yeah. The yeah. debacle? We should call it the debacle. <laughs> yeah, that was a mess. What a mess. What's really unfortunate is I learned nothing. I learned nothing new about either person. They are exactly who they were when the debate started. Same exact people. Didn't learn a damn thing. I don't know. Couldn't tell you either person's policy on any issue. No. Mm -mm. I mean, it's all the stuff that they've been tweeting and making videos about and doing speeches about. It's the same shit. I mean, it's just chaos. (laughs) It's chaos. It's mudslinging. It's defamation of character. It's bullshit. And it's, it's embarrassing. Really, yeah. really embarrassing. It and is really embarrassing. And the main rhetoric of that was is him not denouncing white supremacy blatantly. I mean, holy cow. I watched that live and I was like, I hope everyone else saw that. And they did. <laughs> but Oh, everybody saw that. And then he called Elizabeth Warren Pocahontas Again. Uh, twice where I was like, what the fuck? My favorite line of the night was when he Trump was saying, um, People are saying to wear a mask, and then people are saying, you don't need to wear a mask. And then Biden goes, no serious person is saying that. <laughs> I yeah. was like, thank 
like no serious person is saying that. What are you talking about? I mean, you know, I am really moderate. And there were several times in that debate where I went, I actually think Trump is right about whatever it was he was talking about in that moment. Um, one of the things he was talking about was, um, oh, I don't even remember now, but uh, I, there were two times in that debate where I went, Ugh, based on what I've read in uh, newspapers and what I've come up with myself, I think he's actually accurate in what he's saying. Uh, and two times in the debate. But I was just so disappointed that I didn't, I was hoping Mr. Biden would be able to block him out and just talk about his platform. Not who he is as a person. We already know who he is as a person. I know who both these people are. They have been in public office for years now. And I don't need to know who you are. I need to know what I'm voting for. I don't know what I'm voting for. Obviously, if I vote for a person, I'm not voting for Donald Trump. But I don't really know what his platform is today. And I don't know what Biden's platform is today either. Yeah, I mean, there's two more debates and they they both have some serious work to do. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if they'll be able to do it. No, I don't know. It's hard for Biden to tone out his voice because he hates him so much. And it's hard for Trump not to interrupt him because he hates him so much. Because Trump is, is he's a dirty fighter. He's a, he's a mudslinger, dirty fighter. It's the same thing he did with um, Hillary. Yeah. But more people dislike Hillary than I think Biden. I think. I could be wrong, though. I think, I think so. a lot of the, f the reason why he won was because so many people hate Hillary and just didn't vote or something like that. You know, an interesting debate to me would be Barack Obama and Donald Trump. Yeah, I would love to see that debate. Yeah, I mean, yes. no, I'm podcasting with Halston. Oh, for real? Yes, I texted you. I'm podcasting when you asked me about lunch. Do you need a special guest? <laughs> oh, you hate this. You hate this. I don't hate this, but my viewers do. That's really, that's so interesting. I apologize. What are you eating? It smells amazing. Yeah, right. What is it? I went off the rails when I got home. Is it from the improv? No. Uh, meatball sandwich. Oh, that's not that good. It's so good, baby. Not that good. And then I had some of your um, some of your homemade sandwiches. Oh, that's good. Well, That's good, yes. right? I made homemade sloppy joe sauce out of our tomatoes from our yard. It was really good. Hey, be honest. If you're a listener of this podcast, be honest and say, do you really hate when I show up? <laughs> do don't, like, don't, don't do that. Don't you're like, not going to be happy with what they say. Or go, well, I'm not going to read them. They send it to you. Oh, yeah, but no, then I have I to. Don't, I don't hate him. I just, I like your podcast. But it's fun when a celebrity rolls in. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Talk about ego. We were just talking about ego. Bert, how do you... Bert, we need your hot take. How do you feel about getting robbed? Oh, do not get me started, bro. It is... Uh... It it uh, very vulnerable. I've been robbed a couple times, and every time I felt like felt like someone read inside my diary or listened to my they they got inside me. It really bothers me. Why did you get robbed? No, we did. Oh yeah, yeah, I know, <laughs> yeah. I was like that's so odd. I just it. got robbed. I just got robbed. <laughs> I wasn't talking about just in general in life if you've ever been robbed. <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> I was just talking about this on Two Bears, One Cave. What, what really bummed me out, Halston, and Leanne will identify with this, is for the very longest time, not only did I just pitch a show called Moat Crashers, but I believed a moat was the best line of defense, that it was the best superior line of defense. And, and I'm not even joking. This is true. I pitched us getting a moat at this house, turning it into a koi pond, but it being like a 10 foot moat. 
I thought no one can rob you if you have a moat. We have a moat. <laughs> we have nine foot, not even joking, nine foot deep, three foot wide uh, ditches dug all through our front yard surrounding our garage. And these guys got over it with refrigerators. Yeah. No bridges. There's no like footbridge. They freaking, I don't know if they threw it over. I don't know how they did it. <laughs> I really don't know how they did it. It's, it's quite a big step to step over with a stove. It was so <laughs> disheartening. <laughs> that you go the dream is over <laughs> the moat dream is over it must be like what someone feels like when they buy a gun to protect their house when their kid shoots their neighbor and you're like fuck this is the exact opposite reason I got a gun <laughs> I'm so, uh, I was so analogy, but that was a bad analogy very but, bad very that's bad. you and your moat <laughs> I was so heartbroken because I kept looking going they beat the moat like, this was my foolproof design was a moat. A moat. I mean. You've been working on this design for years. Yeah, yeah. I'm a man of he a He had few. a TV show called Moat Crashers he wanted to do where he moated everybody's house. I so, a moat. so For security. How would you say that you handled it day of? Do you well, remember screaming at me? I didn't scream at you. Yes, you did. Oh, don't! It's, why would you even put that out there? I didn't. Do you remember? I didn't scream. Oh, you at don't you. remember. I did not. Oh, you don't remember. He screamed at me so bad. The con, oh, the concrete guy came up to me later and was like, that's "Whoa, not, that's not true." It is true. That's not true. <laughs> it's true. Joe this came is, up to me later and was this like, is "Not wow. true." These are all. She has a very, very vivid imagination. <laughs> I do not. You were screaming very, at the robbers. I did not scream yeah, at her. I never screamed, screamed at, at her. Yes, you did. Well, uh, hold on. Do you not remember what you said? Yeah, this is going into the well, fucking... what did you say? This is going on the what internet. What did you scream? What did I didn't you scream say? anything. Yes, you did. What was it? Do you remember? <laughs> this is because he can't handle his anxiety. He was having really bad anxiety oh, about it. Oh, don't... Hang on. There's so much to this story you're not telling Halston. Oh, really? There is. Really? The, the night before. No, that happened I, that night. No, that night, though, we dealt with drama. Yeah, but you screamed at me before that night happened. It's not true. <laughs> it's totally true. You're like Amber Heard on this. Like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm I'm not, not I'm, by the way, I'm not, I'm not a bad guy. I did no, not, you're not a bad I, guy. Well, you're did I at, say you're a bad guy? What did I scream at you? I just what said I <laughs> What did I scream at you? Scream. Hold on. Scream. <laughs> I did not scream you at did, you. You did. You did. You had your arm stiff down by your side like a child. What did I scream? What did I, child? What did I scream? <laughs> what did I scream? I was standing in the door of the garage talking to our contractor, Sean. And Bert's all the way across the yard talking to me across the yard. And I'm in a conversation with Sean. And Bert goes, hey, hey, if you can talk to him, you can talk to me. Talk no, to me. No, no, that and was... I went, I will talk to you when I'm finished talking to him. <laughs> so I was no. talking to him first. You don't remember that? That's not, that, that's I did not no i did not scream yes that. you did if you could talk to him you could talk to me so talk to me and i went you're gonna i'm gonna finish talking to him and then i'll talk to you you don't remember that bed. this fucking sucks. you don't remember that no i didn't none of this happened yes it did and then joe the concrete guy was standing with you and you did that and later he came up and he was like wow you may need some anger management classes oh, shut up you got you what you realize you're you're dictating my narrative now that I'm a fucking abusive husband. Who I never said scream. you were I didn't abusive. Scream! You did. I didn't scream. Scream is a different. Are you screaming now? <laughs> you screamed at me. He hollered across a moat. I, I raised my voice. Across there was no I moat didn't though. Scream! Scream is a weird fucking word to use. I didn't, okay. Oh, damn it! Okay. Oh, damn it! Oh, damn it! You yelled at me. I said, "Hey." Yes. <laughs> Like I'm a dog. Now, if you should have ended with go on, get. Go on, get. <laughs> if you can talk to him, you can talk to me. No wonder people don't like when I show up on the podcast. They're like, oh, <laughs> here comes her abusive husband. I never said you were abusive. I said the sweetest uh, what things I said, about you on Two Bears, One Cake today. The really sweetest sweet. fucking. Let's, let's change the subject. What did I say to you the reason I was never going to cheat on you or leave you? What did I say last night when we were out front? Why, would I, why do I want to be with you for my entire life? Because I have really good boobs. <laughs> that's not what so he said a, it's more leantics <laughs> that's not what he said let's not forget i am the person that said you should start a podcast i'm the person <laughs> that believes in you more than anyone and if you have time to talk to him you have time to talk to me okay? 
a jerk. I am not a jerk. I got to get my punches in where I can, man. <laughs> he did do that actually. Uh, and it, I under, he's lucky because I understood that he was completely unraveled at the safety of this, like at how now I'm unsafe. Now this property's unsafe. I'm really freaking out and I cannot manage my anxiety. That's why he yelled at me. Of course. Yeah. He worries about that stuff before it happens. So of course yeah. it's going to be a lot to handle. His anxiety was like here. And I was just, I just calmly go through those things and go, well, fucking shit happens. Let's figure out how to not have it happen again. And how do we put this back together? And I was having a practical conversation clearly that he, he needed my attention right then. And it was all about him not being able to manage his anxiety. I understood it. I didn't feel violated or abused. I didn't feel like he, you know, smacked me in the back of the head verbally. I didn't feel any of that. I just felt like a child was having a tantrum across the yard that I needed to shut up so I could finish this appropriate conversation before I had the insane one that was going on across the yard. So I don't want anybody to think what he thinks I think, which was that he was abusive. He wasn't. He just was out of control of his emotions in the moment. Of course. Because of his anxiety of that we just got robbed. But it was pretty funny. The concrete guy afterwards was like, wow, your husband may need some anger management. <laughs> I was like, I think you really need some OCD anxiety class. <laughs> this is what he needs. If you could handle that, I think his anger would be pretty okay. <laughs> it was pretty crazy, though. Great celebrity pop in. Oh, you know, celebrity. <laughs> He's so funny because... When he travels, right, when he comes home, we have this thing in our house called reentry. Like when a rocket reenters the atmosphere, it's rough and rocky for a while, right? We usually have at least 12 hours, sometimes 48 hours of reentry. And that is a time period where Bert has to adjust from being or Kreischer on stage with a staff of people who do whatever he says and fans who adore him, who are screaming at him all the time to three women and three dogs who just think he's Bert. He's just dad. And he's just my husband. And yeah, he is all those other things. And I, I look at him not as a celebrity cause I don't care about that. I look at him as what an am amazingly creative person he is, a prolifically creative human being, is really inspiring to me. It's part of the reason I love him. But I don't give a shit about his celebrity, um, not in the way that people do when he's not with us. So I think he's conf he, his psyche gets confused for a couple days, where he's like, I don't understand why. When I say, hey, get me a Diet Coke, my daughters don't scramble to get me a Diet Coke. I don't know. Maybe it's because they're 14 and 16. I don't know. Maybe it's because, because you say it in a very patriarchal manner and they're not going to do that. Maybe it's because they, you're just their dad. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You're just their dad. They don't think of him that way. Thank God. Um, but it, it, we have this reentry period where this like 12 to 48 hours, depending on how long he's been gone, the longer he's been gone, the longer it takes for him to adjust. And it is, um, it's hard for him and it's hard for us. It's not easy. Um, yeah, it's a very weird and unique situation for sure. I, I forget until we go out in public sometimes uh, and you know, the person who's working at whatever store we go to wants to take a picture with him. They leave their desk and like, man, we went to Ohio and he went into the crowd of this one um, concert that we were at. And it was like Beatlemania. It was insane. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's, it's fun. It's everywhere. You walk through an airport. We It takes us like 45 minutes to get through an airport because we're stopped all the time. And we are grateful. Yeah. I am so grateful that he has this success. I don't begrudge any of it. I don't have any problem with any of it. I am very grateful for all of it. But when he steps back into this world, that doesn't exist in this world. We don't care about that in this, in this world. And most people until recently 
most people at the high school don't know who he is. Like they don't, they're not in that circle. They don't listen to podcasts. They don't, they're, they're just kind of clueless in that world. So he's been able to remain sort of normal in this life that we've built. And then everybody in the neighborhood who's seen his career go from, you know, working to this place it is now. Well, they all know he's the same person he was before he had all this notoriety. So they all treat him just like they've always treated him. So we've, we've created this little community where he can walk back into normalcy, but it takes him a minute to be okay with just being normal. You know, I would imagine to have people wanting to give me free things, wanting to just be with me to, to a wife who goes, you got 15 minutes, buddy. And I got to go cause I got to do a B C D that has nothing to do with you. That would be a huge adjustment for somebody, for anybody, you know, you'd have yeah. to be a very large person inside to be able to just shift those gears like that, you know? Yeah. I think it's very healthy for him though, too, to have yes. normalcy. Um, also a cool thing about it though, is that he didn't, he didn't have extreme success until he was in his forties. And right. that, that is, that keeps him humble. That keeps him um, grateful. Mm -hmm. it, it keeps him uh, grounded Mm -hmm. in a sense it, it's different when you're on tour like, it's the same thing with musicians when you're on tour you're the shit people right. are spending hundreds of dollars to come see you they're buying yeah. your merch they're screaming your name it's such a unique experience it's very weird mm -hmm. and it's fun mm -hmm. and he loves it and you guys love your fans you're very nice to the fans he's very nice and 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 i think that it's a balance between the fact that he didn't have extreme success until he was 40 and you guys at home keeping him grounded that way. Yes. You don't, you won't let it get out of control. No. You won't let him stay Burt Kreischer. That's right. And, and I think you're right. The part, the, the key component is he didn't get famous. I hate that word. Yeah, it's he weird. didn't get this successful until the girls were teenagers, young teenagers, like, 12 and 14 is when it really started going shifting. So they had all these years of just my dad travels for work. I don't really know what he does, but when we show up to a birthday party or down the block, he's just George and I's dad. And I think he's a comedian, but you know, I've never seen him. I don't know. Yeah, they don't until, know what that means. Really. No, no. Until very recently that he could have been a banker. No one would have known the difference. And that I think is a gift for him because he wasn't allowed to get too big for his britches. You know, he wasn't allowed to get too big. I think uh, just based on what he's talked about, his story and everything, um, if he would have stayed at the level that he was at in 1997 and just kind of rode that wave and was up there and then, the development deals turned into lead roles and TV shows. And, you know, he's, he's in his early thirties and then it just snowballs into this crazy, like I'm not a human anymore sort of thing. Cause I'm too much my character, like that sort of thing. I think that would have been a bad thing. He would have been, I think what would have happened is he wouldn't have trusted anybody to have been able to have fallen in love with somebody. Yeah. So yeah. he would never, and for him, for that guy, the white picket fence that is our house, the life that is the white picket fence house, uh, life, uh, he needs so badly and always wanted. And it doesn't match being a comedian. Those two things don't match. You know, being a comedian is like being a rock star. Mm -hmm. But he's really needs that white picket fence. I'm the dad. We go on a family vacation. We all go snow skiing together in Big Bear, whatever. That kind of normal, my dad's a banker, life. And I don't know if he had, if his success had continued on that trajectory. I don't know if he would have trusted anybody or maybe even himself enough. Because when we met, he was broke. And 
I was broke and we were broke together, like not even 50 bucks between us after the month bills were paid. And we really had to struggle when we had young children. So I think there is no doubt in his mind where our relationship came from because it came from a place when we had nothing and we had no promise of anything coming. You know, this is such a difficult industry. Um, and I was more successful than he, than he was as a writer. When we met, I was making more money than he was. So for us to have banked on his career, we really didn't know if it was going to pay off, really didn't know, and really didn't expect it to pay off like it did. We just wanted to be able to make a living, to have a house, uh, like a roof over our heads, and not just have $50 at the end of the month. That was our goal, was to be able to save a little bit of money, to be able to put our kids through college, and to be able to put a little money away for retirement every year. That would make us happy. That was always our goal. Um, and at the back of your mind, and it would be really nice if all these amazing, wonderful things happen also. But if we can just get through and be fulfilled in what we're doing, that's going to be okay too. So I think if we, since we started from that place, then it's really easy to be here, you know, to, to be, we, well, I guess we've kind of stayed who we were. Um, when we had no money and could do nothing, he's still coming back to the same house with the same kids. And so they, I guess he's just kind of the same guy. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I would probably be miserable if he wasn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I am miserable of those two days of reentry, <laughs> but after that, I'm like, okay, this is okay. Here's Bert. He's back. Oh yeah, there's my, there's my husband. I'm like, dude, dude, I was not put on this planet to wait on you hand and foot. I don't know who's been doing that for the past two months, but it's not going to be me. So go on with your bad self. But, and he's like, but I don't understand why you don't want to do that for me. Well, I don't know. It's kind of not been the nature of our relationship ever. Not ever. I've never been one to be like, Ooh, can I do that for you? That's just not, I'm just not that person. So I love you guys' story though. I mean, it's, it's so cool. It's so inspiring. It's, it's, it's awesome. And I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. Well, we're happy to have you as part of it. You're great. I was just bragging about you to Leo the other day. Leo has been on the podcast. He's our business manager. And I was like, can we just clone him? Can we just clone Halston and have a Halston be this person and Halston be that? Can we just like, can we just take, his attitude, his positive outlook, and his work ethic, and apply it to these other jobs. <laughs> Please, how do we do that? How do we just clone him? Because <laughs> I was like, that, that guy's worth every penny we pay him and then some. Just because of your attitude. You're always a yes. And if you're not a yes, we know that it's not a yes for real because you're always a yes. So if you ever say, I can't do it right now because I'm at the zoo with Brooklyn, not a problem because you never say no. And not that we need you to never say no, but that you are a yes person and that the way Bert's brain works, if you're not a yes person, you're going to be really unhappy, really, really unhappy. I'm a yes person too. So if you're a no person, then Bert will drive you bananas because he'll be like 11 o'clock, let's do reads for the podcast. And at 11.05, he'll say, can we do it at two? And you're like, oh my God, I've been waiting all morning for 11. And now at 11.05, you're asking me for two. And at two, he'll push it to 2.30. And then he'll push it to 2.45. And if you're not a yes person, you would leave. Well, you would leave. thank you very much. That is so, so nice. Oh my gosh. Um, well, you're very valued. I hope you feel that way, but you are very valued. Uh, very, very valued. Thank you so, so much. That is very nice. Um, I knew, I knew that this was the perfect job for me. I knew, I knew what I needed to be for Bert. Um, it was just a matter of just getting better at the job. And you guys have allowed me to continue to develop and get better every week. And that's all I want to do is just, 
I want to give, I want to thrive. Exactly. You yeah. are thriving. You're doing a fabulous job. That's all I want to do is continue to improve and make your guys' show the best that it can be. And I'm just happy to be here and I have no expectations either. So no one can let me down. You guys can't let me down. I don't expect anything from you. I already, you guys have already given me everything I've ever wanted. You know what I mean? Like that's, I'm just so grateful for you guys and, and, um, for giving me a shot. And I'm grateful that you're grateful for me. And it's, it's really nice. It's a, it's a good feeling. So thank you. Well, thank you very much. And now we get to set up a whole new podcast studio, make it all fancy with all nice stuff, not in a room that's part gym, part bar, part man cave, part golf club storage room, part workout room, part weed smoking room, part. I mean, there's so much shit going on in this room. I can't wait to just have one room for me. That's for me that Bert Kreischer can't go in and put his shit all over and that I can show up and not have to look for my mic. I finally found my mic. It was in my bedroom, my black mic. So it's like that stuff drives me nuts. So I can't wait. The next chapter with Halston is going to be awesome, right? I cannot wait. I'm so excited and I'm, I'm ready to put some serious work in, in that studio and I'm ready to just make these podcasts amazing me too and on that note we should say goodbye everybody run your own race and thrive (laughs) until next time until next time it's always good to talk to you halton i feel like you're my little brother i love that you could be my son which is really scary but (laughs) we won't talk about that i mean if i could have are you 27 i'm 29 29. Okay. So if I would have been, I would have, well, it would be close. I'm 50. So I could have had, how old would I have been? 19. So it's it's possible. Scary. Okay. Little brother, little brother. (laughs) If you grew up in the town that I grew up in, you know, 15, 16 would have been normal to have a kid. (laughs) Yeah. That happened in my hometown too. Um, so anyway, it was really good to talk to you today. Thanks for being my sub again. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much. All right. Until next time. Bye. Bye.